Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve, and excuse me for being a little bit late today, but realize God is good and has gotten me here and is always present. He's an always present help in this time of need. And here we're in chapter 15 of Acts Gospel, and know that God is for you and wants you. Will you want him? Will you stay with him? And as we do, realize we need to pray because we have to have him, right? He's our vital necessity. So, Father God, we welcome you in by your spirit. You're, you are your spirit. <laughs> you are our God. We look to you. We thank you that you're always speaking to our hearts. And, and, and Father, that, that you're confirming those thoughts you've been speaking to us, leading us by, that you bring out things from your word that confirm those things. And then you confirm with signs following. As we follow you, we see that you show up and show out in our benefit, to our benefit, on our behalf. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So as we get started today, like I said, Acts chapter 15. And it starts off in a, a different kind of a way here. It It's... After the last two days where, where they were talking about different towns that they went to and, and discipled many and, and set up different people in these different towns and spent some time there teaching them, right? Discipling them. It says this, but some men came down from Judea, from church, from, from the big church, and were instructing the brethren Unless you are circumcised in accordance with the Mosaic customs, you cannot be saved. Now, why are they saying this? You know, they, there's things in the Word and you feel like, well, we can't let go of that. that that's so important. We've, we've got to hold on to that. But when you look at the root of it, why it was there, different things, the the let's just say it this way the apostles in jerusalem decided it wasn't needed it wasn't to be followed any longer and here there was a certain amount of things that were just works and was that a works it was given to abraham to do right and to isaac and to jacob and so on right as we see that this isn't what else isn't there's, there's things that uh, we are in. We, the, the Old Testament is not done away with. In most things, it's superseded. So in the things with um, what, what things came up to the cross and the resurrection and what didn't have to be there after the resurrection. That's, that's some things we may touch on, just a few things, but not much. But we're going to look at how, whoop, we're going to look at how the disciples make decisions. Remember, they were cast in lots for who was supposed to take Judas, Judas Iscariot's spot. From that time on, they didn't cast lots no more. But it comes down and it goes through this course of, of events. And... And we want to see how Paul and Barnabas, you know, in the Amplified, it, it says that they uh, they had had no small disagreement with these men from Judea and discussion with them. In the King James and, and other versions, it's, it talks about they were had arguments. Well, so no small disagreement. So was was Paul going back into debate and all that other stuff. There's a certain amount of that there, but I, I see how it's in the Amplified. It says, had no small disagreement and discussion. Now, in the discussion, you can look at it as being an argument, but if it's not an argument in your heart, then it's not an argument coming out your mouth, hopefully. The people might take it as an argument, but I think Paul is learning and trying his best to stop arguing. And so as we kind of continue down here, 
It says in verse 3, So being fitted out and sent on their way by the church, where are they? And and here, they, they stayed there and, and realized that they're in Antioch, and they, they've got certain things going on. And here, men came down, and they send them back to the church, the, the head of the church, basically. And, and here, as we look at this, we see that um, these two, um, Fancia and Smyrna, telling of the conversation of the Gentiles, the heathen, they cause great rejoicing among the brethren. So, so being fitted out and sent on their way by the church, they went through both Phoenicia and Samaria in telling of the conversions, the things that were happening, the things that, that were happening through their ministry. Do you see that? The ministry that the Holy Spirit was sending them out on. And when they arrived in Jerusalem, they were heartily welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they told them all that God had accomplished through them. So that was encouraging, right? And then it says, but some who believed, who had acknowledged Jesus as their Savior and devoted themselves to him, belonged to the sec sect of the Pharisees still, re realized the Pharisees came over and they just came into the church and they were still of that same sect. So they, they were trying to keep that together because they weren't seeing that it was supposed to be done away with. And, and as they did, they rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise and to charge them to obey the law of Moses. Now, those that went with Paul and Barnabas went back and they sure stirred up that party, right? As the party is being stirred up, they're, they're needing resolve. Things resolve. They're following as much as they know the, the Holy Spirit. They're trying to do it right. Wouldn't you be trying to do it right? Yeah. So these people are trying to do it right. And the apostles and elders were assembled together to look into and consider this matter. Now, when you see that the elders of the church, the, the apostles, the ones that were sent by Jesus, right? And the disciples that had traveled with him were probably some of those elders. Some that stayed with it and, and held to and went through things that that took place all right and you'll see that a little bit later the apostles uh, after after there had been a long debate so they're all debating Peter got up and said to them brethren you know that quite a while ago God made a choice or selection from among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the message of the gospel and believe so as as we look at how he's presenting this peter saying it was through my mouth the gentiles received god god told me to go and do this and he said something through my mouth poured out his spirit just as on on us and here it comes down and it comes into verse 8 and it says and god who is acquainted with and understands the heart bore witness about those Gentiles. Now, when when you have God bearing witness about something, is there a debate anymore? No. No. And giving them the Holy Spirit as he also did us. Now, as Peter is going through these things, with the same sign of as as of tongues that fell on the the apostles, right? So as we see this in verse nine, it says, "And he made no difference between us and them, but cleansed their hearts by faith." Now, how do our hearts get cleansed? So we have to put our faith in God, and that's how our hearts get cleansed. Yeah. We connect with our Father in a specific way that 
we have this relationship. And he, by the blood of Jesus, cleanses our hearts, right? As we receive what God has done, he cleanses our hearts. That's what it's saying here. But cleanse their hearts by faith, by a strong and welcome conviction that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, right? Now, in, look at what it says here in verse 10. Now then, why do you try to test by putting a yoke on the necks of the disciples, such as ne neither our forefathers nor we ourselves were able to endure? So he's saying the circumcision, not, none of us could endure it. None of us could make it through it. None of us were doing it exactly right. That's what he's saying. It's saying, why do you tempt and test God? The last time we see somebody tempting and testing the Holy Spirit, which is God, right? You see those two people die. Uh, Sapphira and... Uh, no, I didn't go back and look, look their names up. But uh, we, we see it back here in, in uh, chapter 3. Actually, it's chapter 4, I think. Sapphira, Sapphira and... I'm not seeing his name, but it doesn't matter. So, you know who, what the story I'm talking about. They, they plotted together to deceive God, really. Because those that were taking the and selling their properties, it was theirs. They could have done whatever they felt like with it. But once they dedicated and said, this is the whole amount, they're lying. They chose to lie, though they were keeping back a part. It was theirs, all the way up into that point that they gave it. Maybe they dedicated it, and maybe that was the thing. But as we see different things here, they're trying to test and put a yoke on the necks of disciples. As he calls them disciples, he's realizing, Peter is saying, these people that are, that are getting converted, these Gentiles that are getting converted and coming in, they're disciples just like everybody else. Just like you and me, right? As we take this place, let's see how what it says here in verse 11. It says, but we believe that we are saved through grace. So we're saved through grace? Yeah, it was by faith that it might be by grace, right? You, you remember these. And as we look at these scriptures and we start putting things together, like Jesus was saying, we see that then the whole assembly remained silent, right? And they listened intently to Barnabas and Paul rehearse what signs and wonders God had performed through them among the Gentiles. They already said it, but everybody got quiet after Peter got up and spoke. How is he speaking? Most likely by the Holy Spirit. He's getting something from the Holy Spirit and bringing it forth. And here, as this is, is being played out, they, they rehearse it all, all these signs and wonders. Now, as they come down, then this is what happens. James gets up, and James replies, Brethren, listen to me. Simon, you know, Peter, has rehearsed how God first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people. Now, realize God is taking out of every nation, every tongue, every language, every, every group here on, on earth, people for himself. He's taken them out of them. Did he remove them from that area? No, no. It's the heart that God is looking at. You can be in the midst of things. You better watch out if, when you're, you're in the midst and pay attention to where your heart's going. Watch if you're starting to be pulled away by something and, and pull out of there. If you're in a group you shouldn't be in, Pull out of those groups, get with your own people. That doesn't mean you're supposed to separate and never see a, another Gentile or another person that's not saved. 
No, no, no. How would they hear the gospel if you're not there with them? No, no, no. It's working and keeping your heart from being de deceived. And as we work together as a group, as a church, the body of Christ going forth, that's why they were sending them out two by two. So one, if one started to slip up, the other could catch. And, and if that one started to slip up, the other one could catch. And they work together. That's how we're supposed to work. And here it comes down, and James goes through this whole discourse. And, and he brings out a, a point here. It says, um, in verse 15, With this, the predictions of the prophets agree. As it is written, After this, I will come back and will rebuild the house of David with uh, which has fallen, I will rebuild its very ruins, and I will set it up again. He's talking about that tent. Um, in in David's time, he he took the Ark of the Covenant out of the tent of meetings, and put it in a like a, a a bannered off courtyard, and let Gentile and Jew alike come in and worship before it without all the the separations god was wanting to be with his people and that was a representative of that right so let's move on and it comes down here and james says therefore it is my opinion that we should not put obstacles in the way of and annoy and disturb those of the gentiles who turn to god now that's that's something straight from the Holy Spirit, I believe. As, as they get down here to the end, it says, we and the Holy Spirit agree to do this. <laughs> they were agreeing with the Holy Spirit. They, they, are, they are pointing out certain things here. And, and these things that they put forth, realize that these things are still for us today. And where James brings forth these ideas, they say it just just slightly different of the letter that they read, and I'm I'm gonna read what James read, and we'll we'll jump past all that. Therefore, it is my opinion that we should not put obstacles in the way, annoy and disturb those of the Gentiles who turned to God, but we should send forth word to them in writing to abstain from and avoid anything that is has been polluted by offering to idols. Now, Paul uh, is answering in one of his letters that very thing. Are we, are we, to, can we eat the meat offered to idols? It, it's not going to hurt us. We, we believe that demons don't have anything. And, and he doesn't really answer that question with a yes and no answer like they were wanting. But says, look, if 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 your heart is is right before God and you see it all right to eat, that's great. But if your brother that sees you eating something that you know maybe you sat down at restaurant of of a place that you know they know offers that meat and stuff as sacrifice, if if you are seen by a brother that his heart isn't in that place and he comes up and says something to you abstain don't don't do it for the sake of the brother's heart not yours so as you look at different things he's saying uh don't don't eat anything polluted by the offering to idols um all sexual impur impurity and eating meats that have been strangled are tasting blood. Now, they they came up with these because those were things that were told them from a long time, and they saw the harmfulness of those things. And because those are harmful, that's why they're saying these things are harmful. Don't do this. All right? So it comes down and it says... Let me read verse 21. Um, 
I, I, I like to point this out because sometimes we get into just preaching and who are we preaching? Are we, are we preaching the news? Are we preaching, you know, uh, what people are saying out in the world? Are we preaching what the, you know, the newspaper says, what are we preaching? In verse 21, it says, far, far from ancient generations, Moses has been preached in every town, for he is read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. Now, realize if, if you said something by the Holy Spirit and somebody wrote it down verbatim and here, then they started reading that other places, you are being preached. But it wasn't you that necessarily said it, but the Holy Spirit said it through you. But still in all, you are being preached. Do you see it? I, I just like to see how they looked at things back then. Because we have, to, we have to differentiate how we do things as Christians today in the, the lives and the world we live now, right? Um, let's, let's jump all the way down here to verse 25. The second part of it, it says, To you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, I like to see that the apostles are sending back message and they're even saying something about Barnabas and Paul that they are beloved to us. They are in covenant with us, in the blood of Jesus, in this Christianity, right? As, as we see these things, and it says in verse 26, men who have hazarded their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's a testimony being sent back along with this letter to be read, not just by Paul and Barnabas, uh, our, uh, yeah, Paul and Barnabas, but also by these key men. Silas is one of them, and uh, I don't see the other one's name. I don't, I didn't highlight it there. But as we see, they sent back men of renown, people that were going out and seeing to and doing the ministry. So this is what it comes down and says. In verse 28, what I mentioned a, a, a minute ago, for it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to lay upon you any greater burden than these indis indispensable requirements. And here it goes back through them again. Abstain from s stuff, meats, sacrificed idols, tasting blood, and eating meats that were strangled and sexual impurity. Now, why they moved those things around, in their culture, I think they would put the things that were most important first, and these were all important. You're going to abstain from them all. Do you, do you see? I know I started putting those, oh, but it's everything. And then it comes down, and it, it says this in verse 33, and after sending spending time some time there they were sent back by the brethren with the greetings of peace to those who had sent them now realize silas stays behind but they stayed on there and preached they they seen that these men that were elders in the church had something that they could teach and portray and hear spending time with them, encouraging each other. There's a lot of community there. See that? You're supposed to have community with other Christians and and stay there. There's there's quite a bit that has to be said about that. But I want you to, to stay with me here. As we come down to verse 36, it says, After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Come, let us go back and visit all those and help and minister to all the brethren in every town where we made known the message of the Lord. Now, these men were returning. They said they finished what their course was before, and they returned, and now they're going back out. And they're going to take this letter along with them, and they're going to let them know the same things, right? And Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, 
his near relative is what it says here. But Paul didn't think it was a good idea since he, John Mark, deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them to the work. What work? The work of the gospel. It was, it was their, their calling to go out and share the gospel. And see, Paul and Barnabas went together, two of them together, right? We, we, we are seeing these same things happen over and over again. So how are we supposed to do it? You should go together. And, you know, there's times you're going to go to your neighbor's house, maybe not with somebody else. It would behoove you even to take somebody then. Because if, if you get tripped up, if you get caught up in your thoughts and lose where you're at or, or you get, get distressed in any way, the other person maybe is at peace and can hear from the Holy Spirit and, and bring the conversation where it needs to go. All those things are good. Look at verse 39. It says, And there followed a sharp disagreement between them so that they separated from each other. And Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus, and Paul selected Silas and set out, uh, being commended by the brethren to grace of the Lord. And he passed through Syria and Cilicia, establishing and strengthening the churches. Now, before I, I, I read this again today, I thought, well, Silas was just somebody that maybe got born again under Paul's ministry, but it wasn't. And here we see then Timothy's going to be coming into to the, the screen. And he came into the ministry, I believe, possibly through somebody else. But here he's coming up under Paul to be that helper the way John Mark was. So in all of these things, realize if if we just think we're going to do the ministry that we're going to just um go out by ourselves do this thing by ourselves we're kidding ourselves we're seeing that this is how the church began why would it be any different for us today are we stronger today <laughs> i i think they had a whole lot more together and and here those original messages were stronger because they were eyewitnesses. It hadn't changed any hands. They gave more and more, I think, background to what Jesus was saying and then how it was interpreted by them because Jesus explained things fully to them. So as we see, this is chapter 15 of Acts and we, we want to always keep one thing in mind, that God loves us and is seeing to us in this very life. That God loves us, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Bye-bye. Be encouraged. And hey, if you can, come and show up at church. We'd love to love on you. All right.